Why, hello there. Thank you so much for being here and welcome back to my channel. Every time I say that, it still sounds pretty weird. Anyways, so I've been looking back recently at how my relationship with food has evolved in the past two and a half years and I realized that I've come a really long way. I just really wanted to share a couple of changes that I've made over the years that have really helped me to develop a healthy relationship with food. I just want to say that I'm not a professional by any means. Also, my journey with food is in no way over. There are still things that definitely need work and things that I'm learning about every day. So this isn't the end. This is just the middle. <laughs> Before I get into things, I just want to ask if you've subscribed. I really would like it if you subscribed. <laughs> I've got lots more exciting content coming. Please give it a subscribe and like this video if you liked it. The first thing that I did was accept that my relationship with food needed professional help. And I realized this in 2018. I then started seeing a dietitian and that was the first time that I started learning more about nutrition and learning about the importance of food and why it's important to fuel our bodies. I think that I would still be stuck if I hadn't have gotten any help. It's also important to note that you also need mental help as well. I saw a psychologist who also has really helped me with my journey with food. So I'm really appreciative that I was able to seek professional help. Found what we're looking for in life. I finally listened to my hunger cues. When I was eating in a caloric deficit and I was eating very plain foods, I found myself being very food focused and I was really food focused on calorically dense foods like donuts and ice cream and brownies and hamburgers and all that kind of stuff. Hey, it's me on a different day. I just wanted to quickly chat about what being food focused during this time meant for me. And basically what it meant was that I was constantly looking at pictures of food. I constantly wanted to look at pictures or videos of other people eating. And food was pretty much the only thing that I thought about. I constantly wanted to be around these types of foods, but this is really not pretty at all. Um, <laughs> But basically when I finally listened to what professionals were saying and I finally listened to my cravings and started eating enough for my body, then this obsession with food went away. And back to your regular programming. I had developed this obsession with donuts and eventually one day Keegan and I were walking in Rosebank and he said, let's get a donut. And I was like, what? You can't just go and get a donut when you feel like getting a donut. And it turns out you can. If you want a donut, you can go and eat a donut and it's great. So after that, we would go and get a donut every single week until donuts weren't that exciting to me anymore. And it was pretty cool. Change number three was that I realized that I needed to be my own cheerleader. When you have a strained relationship with food, things that seem normal to other people might feel like a really big deal to you. I learned that I needed to stop looking at other people for approval and just take the time to be proud of myself and to realize how far I'd come with my relationship with food. For example, one day I might say, Hey Bridge, I noticed that you had a whole pizza last night. Yeah, I did. Oh my soul, I'm so impressed. Normally you would feel so guilty about doing that. I know, but it was just such a normal thing. It really didn't bother me. Good job, self. You know, something like that. <laughs> Moving on. Change number four was that I learned that healthy food can taste delicious. I always had this idea in my head that food needed to be plain and boring in order for it to be considered healthy, when this is really not the case at all. Healthy food can be just as delicious, which is why I love making things like black bean brownies. I also accepted that I don't really love the taste of plain chicken breast and rice and broccoli. It doesn't appear to me I don't think it tastes good and therefore I don't have to eat it. The fifth change that I made was that I stopped following influencers who were bad for my health. 
When I was restricting, I used to watch a lot of cheat days and a lot of people who claimed they knew a lot about nutrition, but really they didn't know what they were talking about. And these people became really bad for my mind and bad for my self-esteem. And so I had to cut them out of my life. I had to cut them out of my YouTube subscriptions. I had to cut them out of my Instagram and I had to start fresh, which leads me to my sixth change which was to start following influencers that helped me on my food journey and who were science-based and who taught me so much about nutrition and fueling your body and living a healthy lifestyle. Some examples of really, really great influencers would be Abby Sharp, who's a dietitian on YouTube. Abby Sharp completely changed my perspective on food and intuitive eating and really encouraged me to start my own intuitive eating journey. Without her, I would be a couple of steps behind so I'm really grateful that the internet has people like her. Someone else that I would follow would be Natasha Ocean. She's also been great and has so much science to back up what the research is saying. I also love following Shanna Monae Spence on Instagram. She's also a registered dietitian and she shares information and little daily reminders that you don't need to follow diet culture. It's really nice when I'm scrolling through my Instagram feed to get a reminder to continue to listen to my body and continue to eat in a way that works for me. Tip number seven was that I finally stopped measuring my food. These used to be my best friends for a really long time, but I realized that I didn't need to do it anymore. I knew that I had a tendency to undereat, and so it really helped me to make sure that I was eating enough and it was good for me to do for a while. And I realized that I didn't necessarily need to do it anymore because I was eating intuitively and I could decide how much my body wanted or needed. This is probably the change that took the longest. I'll admit that sometimes I still like to weigh my breakfast in the morning, but that's usually the only meal that I'll weigh. I'm working on getting rid of this entirely to understand that your relationship with food takes time. And my final tip is finding a way of eating that is sustainable for a lifetime. I think I've managed to do that. I'm really glad that I'm intuitively eating and I'm eating in a way that is sustainable for me. Call us crazy, but things are finally right. Let me know what you think. This was quite a hard video to film because I think food is such a personal thing and our eating journeys are such a personal thing. It sometimes can feel quite hard to share, but I'm trying to be brave. Thank you once again for being here. I've got a really exciting video coming next week. I'm doing a lockdown obstacle course. Stay tuned for that. Yeah, let me know what else you want to see. I hope you have a great day. Bye. Oh, you and I, we got it.